Welcome to Precision Golf and our first Friday Live of February. I've uh, got uh, Ian Morgan here, who's been a good friend of ours for a long time uh, and doing a bit of work with us on business development as well. Um, not been fitted for 10 years. Quite a so, while. So, uh, going to go through irons and wedges today. Uh, and so, any questions you've got as we go through the session, just message them in. James will let me know and we'll try and answer as many questions as possible if you've got them, any, anything as we go through. Um, I guess a bit of background, we fitted, I mean, fitted these back in, uh, I think it was August 2013. Um, yep. And uh, as you might see from the odd bit and piece, Ian's a fan of orange. So <laughs> orange ferrules, sadly no orange grips, but uh, I'm sure we can try something this time around. Yeah, we, um, we had a little um, orange eye painted into the Mizuno as well. Yeah. That was one of James's uh, little tricks. So a bit of background on the game, not playing quite as much now, more experienced <laughs> likewise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say I'm less, a bit, bit less obsessed with golf than I used to be. Mm -hmm. So it's more, it's a very much a social thing for me rather than I've got to improve. I've got to get my handicap yeah. down. So my handicap's drifted up from a touch five and a half, ten years ago. I'm probably knocking it around in eight to ten. Yeah. But can have a bad day where it's 14, 15 or, yeah. or worse. So I'm playing less and mm. less bothered about bad days out, but still want to you know, have good shots and yeah. enjoy going out there and... Yeah, and part you know, of enjoying, enjoying is playing well, isn't it? You know, to, you know, it's it's yeah. pretty miserable when you're having a chop around. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've never been a club snapper. You know, I, I'm never going to get angry. <laughs> I, 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 when, if you miss a putt, you get quite angry. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, I still care far too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so I'm a little bit, bit less bothered about outcomes, but still... Mm want to hit good, enjoy yeah. hitting good shots and you know, obviously enjoy a great round. Mm. And what you've been noticing with these over the last, sort of, I guess, couple of years of playing a bit less and mm. obviously being you know, eight, nine, ten years on from the original build, just that the, the bad shots are punished a bit more. Yeah, and just or just hitting unusually bad shots as right. well. So, mm. you know, I never used to, my irons were always a very solid part of my game. I could yeah. comfortably always know my six iron would find a green 180 yards away. These days, it's more, I could not just miss the green, but I could fat it and come up 30 yards short, yeah. you know, and, and suddenly the, the score's gone to pot. So mm. it's more seeing if there's a way to give me some weapons which yeah. help me avoid those really bad shots and yeah. bad outcomes. And there was, um, there was a phrase um, just before we started a live, a phrase you said about how, you, you, how the clubs used to feel and how you like mm. them to feel again. Yeah, so, so um, quite nice. Yeah, so when, when Simon first fitted me, um, I came in with a horrible, clunky bag of game improvement Callaway somethings that were bought in 09, I think, off, mm. off the shelf stuff. Um, and when you fitted me into these, these felt like ones. You know, yeah. it was the transformation in terms of feel, connectedness to the club was unbelievable. And it was almost as if they were built from my hands. Mm. Um, and, and I'd love to think that because of arguably these aren't the right club anymore, if we yeah. can find, uh, you know, a build that feels like wands again, yeah. then I could go around and you know, yeah. work some magic. Right, better get on the Hogwarts Express then, haven't we? <laughs> You've been curing that joke. <laughs> I've, been, I've you? been thinking about that ever since you said it first time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll try and crash so, in. So we'll have a little, have a few looseners and things, and we'll um, get a little look at what's going on. So you say playing now, on average. Okay, well, this time of year is always difficult. Yeah. but Roughly, how often would you say you're getting out now? Well, look, over a year, I'm probably playing 20 rounds, yeah. but they come in sort of spurts. So I go away on holiday, get four rounds in over a week and a half, yeah. and then I'll go six weeks without hitting a ball. You know, it's it's a it. bit yeah, yeah. up and down. So, so you've got five good periods a year of golf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Definitely not a winter golfer, though. Mm. Ooh, one round there we go. And generally, from a shot pattern point of view, when, when you're swinging well, what, what, mm. what shot would you see from a shape point of view? Would it be pretty neutral or would you play for a particular shot shape? Neutral. Uh, yeah. You know, when I'm swinging well, I feel as though I've, I, I could send it in a certain direction, mm. but I don't go to a draw or go to a yeah. fade. I just kind of, if it's a straight shot, I hit it straight. That wasn't straight. <laughs> Started straight. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the start, isn't it? <laughs> okay. There we go. Bit, bit on the other way. And ball-wise, you're playing the switch on soft <coughs> field. Is that how long yeah. have you played that for? Well, we'll use that for the main bit of the fitting yeah. as well. Probably 
10 years, I, I had a round with a, a pro who looked at my swing with Pro V1Xs and said, Ian, you're not swinging fast enough to get the most out of that ball, mm. hit a softer ball. Yeah. So I just took his advice and did, and it felt okay. So yeah. I wouldn't say I've thought a lot about it, but yeah, they're cheaper as well. It, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which always helps. Yeah. When one plugs in the middle of a fairway in, in winter, it's, it's a little bit less annoying, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's not another six, seven quid down the drain. Yeah. So that's probably a good example of a bad shot. Call it a little bit heavy. Yeah. Tugged it left. And would the left miss be more likely than a miss right? Or is, yeah. it, is it more about strike than direction? I'd say I'm... I don't really hit fades or shanks or, or, or mm. wides right. It's, you know, if I catch it... You, you, have, you have just... You have just, uh, yeah, that's just jinx, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's going to address everything out the toe from now on, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah. I mean... More uh, quality uh, of contact than a definite kind of left-right miss. Yeah, but if, if you looked at all my bad shots over the year, 80% of them have gone left. Okay. I, I think that's right, right because yeah. I've so. ended up catching it a bit early, flipping the club, yeah. and, okay. and then it's gone. Cool. And, and arguably... I think when we look at Trapman, I think my swing plane is pro I'm always coming out to win a bit, mm -hmm. so I can be a bit tuggy anyway. Yeah. Just that's just bad bad swing, I suppose. But well, it's not uh, path wise. It's pretty neutral. Okay. Say so a little out to win, a couple of degrees, but nothing major. And physically, you know, any injuries, anything to, um, to be of note? Not really. Everything seems to move. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's still upright. I'm probably yeah, still standing. <laughs> Yeah. Probably not as flexible as I was. Mm. I probably don't get a full turn in. Yeah. Um, I feel as though I don't. Not mm. because I probably can't, but I just don't really... I, I don't really aggress the ball. You know, I've yeah. got quite a sort of gentle swing. So, so I'm not you, really... You go down a club and swing smoother on... Oh, sorry, go up a club and swing smoother on and go down a club and hit it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if I really try and go at a ball, I don't think it improves the outcome at all. So. Mm. And roughly speaking, <clears throat> what would you play if you've got a nice par three, six iron distance, what would you play that for when it's not, I say, a quagmire or frozen outside? When it's a nice sort of spring, spring day, yeah. what sort of distance would you play the six for? Well, I, I think anything from 170 to 175, I think nowadays is... Okay. Yeah, if I, if I really catch it perfectly, I might get it, I will get it 180. But I'm probably, you know, understanding that by and large I won't hit it that yeah. well all the time. Okay. You know, if the, if it's 180 and the pins at the front, I'll I'll, I'll hit a five, yeah. for example. Got. It's a bit unlike when. Uh, when Ian was with us in Portugal in October and there was a hole that was 170 yards and it was into about a force 10 gale <laughs> yes. that pretty much everyone there, I had a pride, couldn't take a head cover off. But um, yeah, it ended up being woods. Oh yeah, I hit three wood. <laughs> yeah. I actually hit a good three wood on that hole, but that was insane. You were the only golf. one that made it. I think the rest of us all came up short. <laughs> that, was, that was fun. Which was wet. Yes. Yeah. That was Penelonga, wasn't it? Was yeah. It Penelonga? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that was one of the strongest winds I've ever played in. It was comical. It was unplayable, frankly, wasn't it? it yeah, yeah, yeah. The balls were blowing around it's on the green. It's a good job the greens were not running swift. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's get a couple more just whilst you mm -hmm. get that <coughs> loosened up. So currently playing the Mizuno the MP64, which is like a muscle cavity head. Mm. Um, from a... I guess from a head style point of view, have you always liked the more traditional style heads, so the neater, cleaner shapes, of softer, softer feel heads? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, in my youth, I had a set of secondhand TP11s with the first mm. kind of oh, so crazy looking yeah, yeah. clubs that I had yeah. beautiful things. Um, and then I went to Tezoids, mm. had those for a while. So always really, you know, Mizuno's have been really the club that I've enjoyed to look at. Yeah. Um, and... Never ever swung a hit a ping iron, for example, because mm. back in the day they would. You know, yeah, quite, quite dif different looking. They're a lot more looking. orthodox looking now. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Um, so I've probably got a, certainly a sweet soft soft spot for Mizuno. Yeah. Um, 
but I want to be a bit open-minded as well. Mm. You know, and if for me, probably, if you could say, Ian, this performance is great with the scene, it doesn't quite look as lovely as a Mizuno, but the performance is great, then I think the performance is more important. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think it's interesting is looking at the, <coughs> these ones here, what you're probably seeing a little bit of is you wear, you know, also the depth, you come through the depth of winter and there's not been, as you say, you're not a winter golfer, so no. not been playing an awful lot. Probably seeing, I reckon club speed's a couple of miles an hour, two, three miles an hour down from where you would be when it's warmer and playing a bit more. Mm. But I think where you're, where you're thinking about distance wise would be full, full bore, nice hot summer, ball really carrying. I reckon right. 170 odd, is more a, a more a mean distance to play for. Mm. I mean, actually, performance-wise, the, the the flight you're getting, the launch and the spin's quite efficient. It's certainly not spinny. It's on the stronger side of mid, but not low. Mm. You know, good launch um, with the soft feel ball. It's like to spin a little bit less than a you know, Vodacom's premium ball, mm. and that's that's. The area where that's going to have the most effect is down the wedges. So actually, from a mid-iron point of view, we don't really see that much difference in spin profile because the um, you know the cover being a little less uh, less elastic than a mm. Pro V1 or like the Z Star Strixon. It's only when the loft gets high and you need it to, to bite the grooves to bite into the cover to create the spin that mm. that takes really takes effect. Mm. You could play. I mean, instances where like you know single piece almost a sort of range ball spin not that differently than a Pro V1 at a mid iron range because it's more the speed and the angle of attack. It's not not the grooves creating the spin. It's the friction okay. from from that contact on the face. And at, at that sort of loft, there's not a massive amount of it. So, mm, mm. Um, it's, but it's gonna be more the bottom <coughs> end where potentially when we get to the wedges, you might see a different flight. So the less the cover grips the face, the higher it's gonna launch and less spin. Okay. So it's at that end when we're kind of, if we're looking at ball side of things, you like to see a difference there rather than mid irons. But you know, general kind of ball speed efficiency is good. Yeah, I think where we're at with these is in a bay mm. and when you're playing regularly, where you're kind of swinging well, freed up, there's not a consequence on there, there's a real kind of free will through it. Mm. They're, not, they're not beyond capability, but they're kind of at upper range of, you've got to be committing through the swing to get the best yeah. out of them. And mm. you can definitely see there's a little bit of exaggerating, a little bit of back hit, and, and you can see weight yeah. almost fall back a little bit as you mm. come through. Mm. And that, that's um, symptomatic of having to catapult the club through. Okay. And that's where that left miss comes from, because mm. then the club faces, catching up quickly and flipping a little bit, okay. rather than being able to lead the club face through, yeah. rotate through and control the club face. So that's where I think that left hand, and also the heavy shot comes from. It just gets, mm. a, if you get a little out of sync or it's cold and you're, you know, if you haven't played a lot, the timing's a little less strong, mm. that the club just gets a little stuck and then bang into the ground. Yeah, yeah. So that for me is where those two, for the better phrase, errors make sure. total sense from a, from a, a um, uh, root cause point of view, mm. but you know, good shots wise, the good <coughs> ones are you know take you know, that one there. That's a great shot. It's got a calculation on spin on that one, um, but the you know, ball speed efficiency 141. That's good. Mm. Um, you're not a big. You you're generally about two degrees down angle attack, so you're not a big divot taker, but there's enough angle attack to get a, a decent efficiency, which okay. you're getting there. Um, you know, nice nice amount of launch, spins in a good window. The, the data side of things is good. Mm but through both head and I think and shaft, we can make it just a little bit easier to get the best out of them. Right. Um, and, and then it's gonna be, if I'm gonna go to the, the um, dispersion page here. The, the issues, I don't know whether the, the mouse that I'm controlling on the screen is visible on, is that visible on screen? No. So the, um, the issues, I'll use James's mouse too, so, <laughs> are, not these ones, you know, they're right. nice and solid. Um, it's that one, yeah, and that one, yeah, you know. So it's the percentage error on, and that's not that, that big miss you're talking mm. about, is that bottom left one, yeah. where as you say, it's carried 135 and it's in the water mm. short, yeah, from not necessarily doing that much wrong, mm. but they say get a little out of sync or for the lies a bit dodgy, you catch it, then it just destroys you. Mm. Um, so if we can get you controlling the club. You swinging the club a little bit more than the club kind of swinging you through the ball okay. a little bit. That's that feeling of one where you can just whip it through and control it. Mm. We should lose the big misses and get you more club face mm. control. Um, so they're not, you know, it's 
I'd say over the last 10 years, you've not degenerated horribly from them being completely irrelevant. Yeah. But it's just that they just ask you to be on it more than okay to get the best out of it. Right, which is fine if I'm playing weekly because I'm, I'm, I'm in the groove. Exactly that, exactly that. And that's where irregular play, by the time you've had two or three rounds, you'll start to find a groove and the performance will be there. But, mm. but irregular play, the ones that you're a little bit out of sync, maybe not as confident, not quite freeing through it as mm. much, those are the ones that bite really hard. Mm. So. so what I'm going to do first up is we'll get um, a similar head. We'll, we'll start with a um, kind of the, it's almost the carryover from this. We'll start with the mm. MP223 because it's okay. similar shape, same sort of feel, it's mm. sort of progression on that. There's a bit of face tech to it, yeah. um, but it's not kind of crazy in terms of head style. And we'll work on, excuse me, on that shaft weight just to see how far we can drop it without losing your control. Yeah. Take it off from there. Lovely. I'll grab those components. <laughs> well, you'll see one in, when I... When, <laughs> the, the moment I break a, a club that Simon's assembled for me, you know, we'll get laughter throughout the building, I'm sure. So we're gonna, what I want to do is find too light quickly. So there's no point kind of going down one or two grams each, mm. each shaft. I want to find the lighter end fairly swiftly. As per usual, the shafts aren't put back in the right place. <laughs> Any thoughts on the shaft I've got in here? So that was the KBS Tour 90. Okay. So it's, um, you think it's, no, it's more some 97, <coughs> 98 grams, very even balanced profile through. If you, if you go, if I remember right, if we go too tip heavy, it's just gonna, just gonna drop in behind you. That again mm. creates needs necessity to flip the head through. So right. I wanna keep it that you can just rotate and collect it. Yep. Um, so this one, uh, starting off with the uh, nip on the 850. Uh, mm -hmm. So dropping about, Seven or eight grams, getting it just under 90 grams. Okay. Um, but keeping, it'll be interesting because we're on that, from a weight point of view, it's very much this sort of the upper end of where some of the composites come in. Mm. It's a question of whether that just loses you, because of the change in balance point, which is whether that loses a bit too much feel of the club head. Mm. Um, you know, what I don't want to do is I don't want to go to something that makes you have to rein it back. I still want you to be able to, to kind of free up and, and play a positive swing, but just not to not have to hit at it. So if, you, if we go too light, you're saying I can't hit a, a positive swing at it then? It, it'll, what it'll do is it'll mean from, a, uh, from a, a swing strength point of view, you've almost got to play just back from full and kind of smooth it out a little bit. Okay. So if, you were, if we were nursing an injury, mm. then we'd say, okay, well, it's better to be that way than to make you have to commit to it. Because mm. that takes a bit of strain off, it's a back injury, it takes a bit of strain off having to go for it. Mm. Um, and it's that balance between being able to play a positive swing and having to hit at it, and yeah. then not having to hit at it, having to rein it back. It, so it's that fine, fine yeah. line between enough weight to use to develop the speed in the swing yeah. and going, not enough and too much. But there will be a sweet spot somewhere. Yeah, find. absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so for, for you, you're, you're not someone who you know, enjoys the right, but kind of goes at the ball. So no. we, we're more likely to, uh, to that kind of um, allow you to clip it away a little bit more than force you to have to hit at it. But we, we kind of know, because of what you're playing with, mm -hmm. we know what the, that sort of upper part of that window looks like. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. We know it's not too heavy, but we know it's at the, the top end of where we put you into. So mm. actually, it, it makes it easier. We've yeah. only really got to find two light, and then we're in a pretty narrow sweet spot. Right. So. And, right. and how many grams lighter is this? About eight or nine grams, about 10%. 10%. Mm. So I should be able to feel that difference. If I had the two together, I, I would feel yeah, that. Yeah, and what you're probably going to, you might feel the head a little bit more. Mm. because there's a bit less shaft weight. Mm. So quite often you can go lighter and someone will say that feels heavier because the, the proportion of club that's the head in the mm. total weight goes up a little bit. Right. So it can, you can feel the bottom end a bit more. Yep. Or you go heavier and some people say, oh, it feels lighter because it's more of an even yeah. weight through. So. Yeah. But it feels very personal. So how we, we, we mm. sense things is different mm. player to player. So. Yeah. Okay, to shoot. All right. Okay. 
Right. That's good. good. Felt easy. Which is a good start. Yeah, and I guess. a couple of kind of keys when we're fitting, kind of looking at that initial change in direction as you go transition. Mm. That's quite a key bit. Yeah, so definitely what seeing with those two, both of them have started left, right. but haven't gone left. Gotcha. They started left and dropped back. So what I'm seeing there is you're able to get the, the handle out in, there's a phraseology, but I, I, mm. the way I sort of say it is keep the handle out in front of you. Mm. you, you the, the, the grip end of the club comes with you as you rotate. Got you. And so you get that leading the club face through the ball, which mm. then means it doesn't flip and break down. You can, yeah. you can not hold the face up, but naturally the face stays square or longer. Yeah. So, you know, both of those are, you know, from a, a shot plan, if I'll go into the averages uh, on the bottom of the screen, you know, path three degrees left, but the face to path is one degree open. Mm. So it's just dropping, mm. start left and just dropping back to the right. With your current ones, it's 1.8 degrees out to him, but the face is closing half a degree on average. And that includes right. one that's gone right. Yeah. So we've changed the pattern through straight away. So there's only, yeah. what with ball speed, I guess it's average. There was a, a couple of misses in there, but mm. uh, you, we probably haven't changed the ball speed very much on the better hits. No. But we've, we've, the face is already under control a little bit more, which is good. So right, I'm gonna, right, that's definitely a, definitely a move in the right direction. <laughs> two we'll goes and I'm uh, done. <laughs> well, we'll come back to it, but okay. uh, we haven't, it's not too light yet, so. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, let's check out question-wise. Uh, so first one, oh, James already answered that, Aiden. Um, Hey, now the KBS iron shafts counterbalanced or neutral balance? KBS Tour versus dollar tape. So KBS is a, the KBS Tour series, no steels counterbalanced, um, just because of the amount of weight and, um, and um, reinforcement in the tip end they've got to do. You're never going to get a counterbalanced steel, but it is a higher, the Tour series, so the Tour light, the KBS Tour, and you put into that, you know, the Tour V, the dollar taper as well are a higher balance point shaft. So they've, they've done heat treatments and things to the tip end to make them more stable. So they haven't had to throw as much extra material down the bottom end to get that stability. So I guess relative, if you, you know, it's a relatively counterbalanced shaft for steel, but it's a, just a very neutral profile. Dollar taper, um, the Tor V is gonna swing very slightly higher balance point than the dollar taper, which is very slightly higher balance point than the KBS tool would be the progression of it. Um, but the dollar tape is designed around a, a slightly lower launch and spin. The Tor V is essentially the same flight as the Tor, but lighter. So mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. stiffen the tip proportionally as a tech bit. Um, and then uh, Stu B, afternoon gents, is there science in kick of the shaft, i.e. who suits a butt stiff versus who suits a tip stiff? Um, so generally speaking, the, the theory of it is that the, the, the stronger that change of direction, the stronger the, the the players load and pull on the handle, the more you stress the top bit of the shaft. So, um, the oh, top so being the, 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 the grip, grip end. end, yeah. So, um, now granted, where that, the more appropriate the bend profile of the shaft and the, and the stability in the right zone for the player, the more consistent how it loads and unloads, and therefore how, the more consistent the spin. The reality of it is that there aren't vast differences. You're getting right into the minutiae of things. So if you get a shaft that's a technically an inappropriate bend profile but swings really well, the amount of consistency you're going to gain from delivering the club mm. well will outride the kick point side of it. But essentially, if you get a quieter load of a more gradual development of speed, you're not stressing mm. the top half of the shaft so much so it doesn't have to be as strong. And that, that's my sort of swing, is it? The uh, it's more of a gradual load. Yeah. It's more of a, a gradual progression rather than a, a harsh snap at it. Sure. So the quicker you load it. <laughs> <laughs> a tickle. <laughs> so, so the more you, you the, the quicker you change direction, the more you're going to load the grip end. So if somebody's got a okay. sharp change of direction, you're going to load the grip end a little yeah. bit more. Um, but you've got Henrik Stenson, who when he was number one on both sides of the Atlantic, was using the Modus 120, which is a very butt soft shaft. Mm. And mm. he's not exactly weak. So mm. it it's... <laughs> It's not the most critical bit of it, mm. but part of it. I'll get, uh, I'll get a couple of other shafts. Uh, I'm just gonna grab a couple of other bits and then come back to those mm -hmm. questions. So I'm just gonna take that weight down a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna go with this. What was the um, 
head I'm hitting again? This is the uh, MP223. So yeah. it's a, um, that's the middle one of the Mizuno Pro series. So right. the, the 221's the, <coughs> the straight blade. Um, and then the 223, the 8, 9 pitch are a single piece forging. And then mm. from 7 iron up, there's a progression in face. Mm. So you're getting a progression in ball speed. So really to keep the ball speed gains club to club at five odd miles an hour, which is your 10 yards okay. from, you're getting more help as you go up the set. Gotcha. So there's a little badge in the back that dampens the sound down and gives a little bit of support to the face. But okay. it's, it's, a, it's been a great head from a um, you know, tech point of view. It's the first of the more kind of the player's end MP range where they put mm. a bit of tech into it. Mm. Um, so historically the uh, MMCs um, have had a, a lighter weight in the back to perimeter weight a bit more, but no face tech. So adding that face tick tech helps to keep the progression of ball speed. But they've got a copper layer, which makes them feel softer. Okay. So um, I'll just, uh, and then Aiden, interesting that weight can influence path. I'm a devil for a reroute under plane into out. So yeah, so if you're, if you're someone who gets, well, we'll get Ian hitting again very quickly. Yep. If you're someone who gets <coughs> underneath, as you change direction dropping that way, what you don't really want is a tip heavy, is an overly tip heavy or an overly heavy shaft because um, that club, that extra weight is effectively take gravity is trying to drop in. So the last thing you want is it to drop in even more. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot going on, isn't there? A lot of moving parts. Yeah, and it, and, uh, it kind of depends on how that happens. If somebody drives the legs onto it, then, yeah. then the club's naturally going to drop in a bit more. So it's, it's looking at body types and swing styles and mm. injuries affect that. Other mm. sports you play affect that. If you're right hand playing or left hand playing right hand and vice versa, top hand dominant, it all affects how you move the club and, and functionally how your body's put together determines yeah. how you're going to move. So um, I'll just, so just going a little bit lighter. How much lighter? Yeah. Uh, again, about another five grams or okay. so. So down to 85 grams from 97, 98. And into this is going to the composite to keep a bit of stability, a bit more stability in the shaft. You get quite thin walls to steal when you start to mm. go under, under um, 85, un under 90 grams for sure. So composite so, is part carbon fiber part? Yes, yeah, so this one's graphite core with right. a, a 59, I believe, miles of steel fiber wrapped around the outside. Oh, now, I see. Part of that is stability, but part of it, it the center of gravity of the shaft moves to the outside. Mm. So it stops it overling and compression quite so much. Okay. Is the, the theory of it. That's the idea, yeah. Okay. That was a knowing okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> Same kind of it's good shot profile, isn't it? Mm. I mean, what's, what's interesting straight away is where we've dropped that bit away. Mm. Both of these uh, uh, haven't got that left bias to the shape. Yeah. Okay. A bit thin that one, I went a bit harder. I mean, this is the bit, you know, a bit, thi a bit thin rather than a bit fat. Yeah. But that one's two yards shorter than the first one. Okay. And so that's where the mm. better we get the club and you in sync, there's, everything's mm. going through the, 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 the ball at the same time, rather than just sort of 5% five, your, five of your muscle mass sort of saving it. Yeah. It's still all connected, so you're grounded, everything's going, so you're, the energy through the ball's more consistent. Okay. So um, we still not found too light. So <laughs> really? Uh, Keep going. Yeah. So club head speed, let's see, head, head speed progression, 79, 79 and a half, 81 there. So we picked up a mile an hour and a bit of club speed on that last yeah. one. I really went for that. <laughs> <laughs> you did a whole that cut. Was my, that was my yeah. Bryson impression. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get rid of that one. Uh, let's just take it down one more notch. Let's go, let's go into that. But I think this is, this is, and going back to that comment about a wand, the wand bit to me, what I would interpret that being is that you can just literally sort of whip it away, create some kind of snap speed rather than mm. having to, it's like a hammer hit, having to fetch it through. That's right. more of a, a kind of a, a heave at it. Yeah. Whereas the more you can just literally kind of whip, whip your rotation through and create speed, mm. that's the, the bit I would interpret as you saying, that, that's when it'll feel like a wand. You, mm. You're not having to hit hard at it to generate speed. You can yeah. just create speed rather than... And it comes with me how, in yeah. the right sort of sequence. So speed rather than power, for one of the better phrases. Yeah. And, you know, and, and when I try and go for a shot, I want to feel as though I'm not then sending the club on a weird path and it's all going to go wrong. Mm. Yeah. There we go. 
So Thanks. same structure of shaft, just a little bit lighter again. So we'll see whether we find that bottom out on weight. And how, how much lighter again? So it's just under 80. And where so did we, we start are, off with mine? We are 22, 23 grams lighter now. Wow. So that's 20%. Mm. At least be easier to carry them around the course. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you're going to end up throwing it over your shoulder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Added benefit. Yeah. Right, uh, found it? too light. So mm. what we've then got is there, that's left bar straight away. So yeah. I could see that straight away because as you started, it went. So right. what happened was the weight of the club didn't drop in. It didn't equalize energy in. Okay. So you overpowered it and you've... Re effectively, you know, release into internals, release the club too soon. Yeah. You could hear it catch the mat a little bit, but then yeah. the face is already shutting down. Yeah. So your next shot, you'll end up backing out of it and steering. Okay. Which we don't want. So. Right. Okay. Fine. And reason why, for those watching why I know that's not just a bad swing, because it wasn't a bad move. Mm, okay. And so you can see when it's player or club, if it's club, it goes immediately as you start down. Mm. Because you're just moving and the club's not, not syncing up with you yeah if it's a bad swing you're likely to see a change in posture or change in you kind of yeah. fall off the shot um so you actually put a, a nice sort of as you got halfway down mm. you, you as you get through the ball and it gets out of sync then you might start to lose it but mm. you didn't change posture it just got away from you mm. so what's interesting is that in my head that was a bad swing because it's a bad strike and yes. a bad outcome yeah the result was and it wasn't feels right. yeah. as though it's all my fault rather than the equipment. I mean, obviously it's nice to blame the equipment, but you know, in my mind that was just a bad swing, but yeah, and it's, it's, it's more than that. And that's the natural thing for a golfer to think, your bad result equals golfer, but actually, yeah. you know, we know it's, well, we can see from, yeah, you know, I'll put it on the, the overall um, dispersion page and show everything. Well, we can see which ones are you and which ones are the club. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, the swings you've made with the better setups are right in the middle or right next to one another. Mm, mm. So, so you can always find excuses. You know? <laughs> yeah. but, but functionally, you've done very little different with the swing. Your yeah. path remained one and a half out to in. Mm. What's changing is the relationship of where the club head is relative to, to your rotation space and therefore the, the, the face orientation has changed. Yeah. And say so too heavy, behind, flip. Yeah. Too light, overpowered, flip. The difference is that the light one, you'll end up opening up, missing right as well. Mm. The heavier one, as it gets behind, you're more like just a chunk mm. um, or really come out of and, and yeah. you've got to do something really exaggerated with your action to, to do the short right okay. one. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see where else I want to go. I'm going to get a bit of a different balance point on this. Uh, and this is all about finding the right shaft first before the head yeah and so I, i've always done it that way some yeah. people do it another, the other way go head first but i've always done it this way because um for me if we find the right shaft then so in terminology we find kind of true impact position we mm. get to the point where you you're in control of the club face and we get the most neutral and natural impact position mm. and then we can use the head to control it from there if you do in my opinion, the other way around, you could pick a head to compensate for something that's happening with the swing that you don't need to. Mm, mm. So that's why I always do it that way around. And head weights are all roughly the same? Yeah, head, head weights are, so you know, shaft weights, you've got variables of, if we're going really top to bottom, you know, graphite, you can go from a 40 gram iron shaft to 137 gram iron shaft. So there's a hundred odd gram, 90 to 95 gram variation in yeah. shaft weight. Head weights, you know, most vertical standard head weights hmm. are within two or three grams. Yeah. Um, maybe six or seven maximum. And then there's another five or six that you can go lighter and a couple of grams heavier depending hmm. on the brand. So you've got yeah. a maybe a 10 to 15, excuse me, 10 to 15 gram top to bottom on a six iron weight. Gotcha. You know, drivers, again, it's probably 10 grams. Mm. Um, you can go outside of that if you're building to extreme lengths, but mm. the, so the, the shaft weight is the biggest weight variable in the, uh, in the club okay. by a long, long way. So the, 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 the whole point of getting the, the club face to the ball is all about the shaft, and then what the ball does in response, then the head starts to yep. have swing, a... Swing style of head, and the shaft can fine-tune it a little bit, yeah. but in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's very much the minor part of controlling flight and trajectory. That's real minutiae. Okay. Um, it's... 
you know, player, swing style, you know, delivery, and then obviously head style and loft then affect the trajectory. Yeah. Okay. That didn't feel great. So I've got relatively different balance point. So this okay. is back up into the 85 gram weight okay. range, mm -hmm. but there's much more weight at the bottom end. Gotcha. That was a better strike. Yeah, so again, first one quite telling. Yeah. Got it squared through that second one, but the mm. first one's quite telling in that you, you're having to work hard to square the face. Mm. And the first one, so if we go tip heavy, yeah. it wants to lay itself down a little bit more. So okay. let's come back. I mean, once you got it squared off, good result, but yeah. because you had to rotate the face square, the spin's come down a little bit. Okay. But based on what that's Good result, shot. long. <laughs> right. But the first one was uh, 23 yards short. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, let me go back into that. And with most iron fits, do you tend to have this amount of tuning in, zeroing in on the right In answer? the main, yeah. I mean, so, so for... For yours, we knew we weren't, you know, we're never going to be that, that far away to start with. Right. Um, if we had been, then I'd have done a horrible job 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but so we know where we are within that, that um, sort of weight boundary. Mm. Um, and it's just a case of finding that bottom out. Um, and then kind of, yeah, once we find that, then it's easy to, easy to find the middle ground. Yeah. Um, it can be... How, what was I going to try and say? Um, I, you can waste a lot of time making small changes in that initial bit. What you want to mm. do is you want to find the top and bottom boundaries quickly. Yeah. Because otherwise it's just a load mm. of wasted swings and yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've all got a limited amount of swings. So mm. um, there's no point messing around going two or three gram changes at the start when you can go 10 to 15. Sure. And really kind of test the, um, test the margins. Yeah. So what, what have we got with this one? So just going back to the steel bar with the I-80. So this is the 85 gram one. Okay. Let's log this back in. Yeah, so I'm straight away back to that. You're more balanced and, and you stay in frame better going back to this. Okay. Straight away we're back to that little bit of a fade and just to... Um, the blue ones, yeah. I'll just highlight those. This is <laughs> pretty tight dispersion. So yeah. that, and, and what's a key one is going back to it, first shot back with it. You, mm. you, if one of the others suited better, you'd have adapted to that and that wouldn't move as well. So one of the key things is straight back to it, it's landed on top of where the other three were. Right. So yeah. yes, the best one with the last one might've gone, I mean, that was about five yards longer because you absolutely rumbled it, but mm. I'd rather have five yards shorter and on top of one another than right. long short. So. Yeah, because I know what to pull out the bag mm. <laughs> on, Absolutely, on yeah. the course then. Uh, question from Rhythmic Disciple. Do you measure shafts to group them in a mathematic chat agnostic way? Uh, I cannot explain how I assess what the player needs. How do you choose between Nippon, Dynamic Gold, KBS, Grabber? So on the wall we group them in categories just so we know where to find them. Um, from working out which one works best, Really, you're just looking, so we know, for example, that the KBS has a certain balance profile and weight ranges. The dynamic golds in the 105s, the 120s are more tip heavy, so you go to them. It's really, it's one of those where in, in my head and in all our fitters' heads, we know what profiles and what shafts swing certain ways. So if we know we're trying to achieve something from a delivery pattern point of view, mm. we know in principle, that like every shaft you test is a, is it gonna work? Or, or I know what, character, what characteristic I'm changing, so I know what a good and bad result is. So that helps shape mm. your direction of travel through the fit. So, um, for example, you know, seeing going a little bit lighter and going to the steel fibre, seeing that swing, well, I'm never going to go to a dynamic gold 95 because it's very tip weighted. We know mm. it's not going to work. Mm. So you, it kind of that process of zoning in on top and bottom weights, you're also looking at balance profiles at the same time and just knowing that, right, if that one works or doesn't work, you know which your roots are off that. So you're kind of playing through a, a yes, no um, 
kind of flow charts in your head of what what you're going through as you're testing different charts. I hope mm. that answers the question right. But, but essentially, they all have certain characteristics within a brand most of the time, or certainly within a model. So you know whether that model is going to work or not work based on something else you've tested. And most importantly, if you know why you've changed a character characteristic, you know why it won't work. Mm. So you're kind of notching off options in your head as you go through. And I'd, I'd guess that you know most you know average amateurs, club golfers have no concept of all of these properties within their irons. No. They'll look at their driver shaft and go, yeah, I've got stiff off. And they think that's yeah. the most important thing to talk about. And they've got no clue about, or no genuine insight into what's going on here. No, and, and, and at the risk of sounding slightly um, um, controversial, I don't think the shaft manufacturers want you to, mm. because that might mean you know it might not work, you might not buy it. Mm. Um, I think the, the, the information given out is fairly, um, minimal. Um, there are a load of numbers on torque and balance points, and you know, that they could you know, frequency numbers. That it's 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 like most people opening a opening a wine list at a restaurant. It's just right. got you know, it's just a list of numbers <coughs> and letters and and oh I've heard of Rioja before. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's you, know, you look at a year and go well, I don't know whether it was a good year or not. Th mm. That's we're a good sommelier. Mm. We know why what flavour palettes work. We know what years were good. We know what patterns and profiles are going to work for someone. So mm. yeah, you, 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 impossible to, unless you're working with them day to day, impossible to know. Right. Um, and well, keep on top of the models as they yeah. work through. Um, yeah, it's, it's and it, it, the only way you can do it is for us is, there's no point in us reading the booklet. We've got to hit them and test them to mm. know how they feel and know mm. how they react. And, mm. and that's all part of the training for this. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I can tell I like wine as well. So. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. No, I'm still maturing, yeah. improving, hopefully. <laughs> right, so according to the theory... And a couple more of this, I'll move back to that steel as well. And actually, kind of something like that, where we've stood and chinwagged for a couple of minutes, mm. and then going back, is the equivalent of being stood on a tee, waiting for yeah. a... And there's... That one just there's a uh, calculation on spin, but we're, mm. st we're still in that same shot pattern. Mm. So that, that's actually quite a good test of something. I'll, yeah. put, I'll put that steel one back in actually. Okay. So we can see it's you know, go back to that dispersion pattern. You know, it's that one a little shorter, just it, it missed the spin. But mm. actually, if I show the tracer on those shots, I don't know if to show that image, that is a pretty damn repeating shot pattern. Yeah. So that, that tells me a hell of a lot about how well you and that club are, are moving together. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this morning, I can already throw in some bad swing or some, have some bad outcomes with other clubs. So it's yeah. not like I'm in the zone today at all. Yeah, and it's just not it's happening just with that. Yeah. yeah. And even, even that last one, if I go between them, you know, was, if you take ball speed, you know, 114, 113, 113. That last one was 113. That was mm. at that spin calculation, mm. which has seen it high. Um, so these ones are a six with a dot on rather than the RCT um, right. uh, trackman balls. Um, it's only the spin which has reduced that distance. So okay. actually, you know, if that's in the same window on spin at you know upper four thousand, yeah, it's landing on top of the others as well. So um, it's it's a very very repeating um, pattern of shot for mm. you. So if we push it back into the steel now just to take that weight back up a little bit and just so i understand mm. there's a, there's a range a local range which has that track man set up where there are the big sensors out on the range yeah how good is that data compared to the data i'm looking at now um it really depends on yeah i mean the, the shot shapes and things it's going to be pretty much bang on if it's mm. measuring the club head data well then you're going to get the shot shapes um the the bit that and this really depends on the quality of the ball. Mm. Ball speeds can be different, particularly with driver. Mm. Um, and if the spin's off, then the distance is going to be off. Right. So, uh, it, yeah, it, it, I would. You're still going to get representative differences in clubs, mm. but in terms of doing your yardages off them and sticking to them rigidly, yeah, they're a, they're a good base point. But but be, you know, ultimately a a range ball in any shape or form is mm. not the same quality of ball no. as a 
premium aftermarket mm. ones. So the variables in results are going to be a little bit greater with those balls. So this should feel a little heavier again to okay. pick up. wasn't a good contact at any rate, so there we go, shovel that. Okay. And that was so the other way. What's interesting with this is, so first, <laughs> this one first time round looked quite good. Yeah. Um, because it was just lighter and easier to swing than your current ones, mm. you were clipping it away, I thought, oh, that looks quite nice. Where we've gone lighter and now gone back up to it, that looks like your old one, <laughs> your original one did it? first time around. So, see, yeah. the first one was nearly that word you mentioned earlier, because it got behind you and then it goes out. Mm. So, the moment the club drops on your back hip, that's in the way from bringing it in here. So, it goes out a bit and goes near the hosel. Right. And the second one, you've then got back to that left hand yeah. rotation and miss. So, mm. it is the steel fibre. Okay, all right. That I would consider with QED. utter certainty. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, the 80. Yeah, so um, again, go back to that dispersion and put show all of them on. It's pretty obvious what the best one is mm. by quite a margin. Mm. And especially considering the shorter one on that, the, the bottom of those blue dots, was affected a little bit by the spin measurement. Yeah. So that actually is higher up and nearer the other ones as well. Right. So, so if I was a darts player, they'd be good darts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top bombing, I think. Is yeah. So uh, let's... Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a couple of other hairs. Actually, I'll check lie on this one first, okay. just where we've got that. I really like where that setup is. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, so within having fitted in before. Um, yeah, length and, and swing rate and swing rate, we were sort of dialing in there. I'll do a little bit on that now, just to cross-reference. Because mm. mm. um, we fitted in before, we've got base specs to work off. There's, you know, from a length point of view, um, you know, we're staying very much at a, a standard length. Actually, Ian's current clubs are a, sort of what we might call a traditional stand length of a six iron 37 and a quarter. Mm. There's literally no need to go beyond that. That's, mm. you know, we're not going to gain enough from <coughs> a... Yeah, it's not like we're battling injuries. It's not like you're... Six foot three, we need to go longer. I've not grown. You know, uh, yes, I keep doing, <laughs> we're not grown over the years. Um, we're not trying to eke out every last mile an hour. There's no benefit to going longer. It's just going to affect strike. Yeah. Um, you know, because we can see efficiency and consistency, knowing your yardage, especially you know, at, at sort of level, you know, an extra two or three yards from going a quarter inch longer. There's mm. not, not really any tangible What's benefit to be had from that. Yeah. Um, because of how tight the dispersion. So, Often we'd be looking at, um, when we're looking at length, we're looking at you know, where someone's existing clubs are relative to the, your kind of general height and posture, leg mm. length, arm length, things like that. Mm. Um, if, you got, if you're tall with a bad back, you've got to wear a little bit longer. Um, all of those elements, because Ian's <laughs> very average. <laughs> uh, in terms of, you know, your proportions you. are very you know, neutral and even. Yeah. We're not looking to change that at all. Um, swing weight wise, I'm just going to dial that in now. So fine tune. Okay. So we're at, at pretty much bang on D1. Right. Um, your original ones with the KBS 90s were just under D2. Um, okay. But going lighter on shaft, that's where it drops a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'm just gonna fine tune that, and I'm also gonna check the lie as well. Then we can, uh, <coughs> and then at this point, we'll start looking at different mm. heads. So from, from, a, from a head style point of view, what we can see from this is, by getting the shaft weight down, your, your impact point, your, your control, the face consistency automatically improves. So. Mm. Um, forgiveness is a mixture of obviously you know, how much of the face someone's using and then needs the head to protect against. Yeah. But it's also you know, mentally, um, it's you've got to you've got to not be. So some players will get intimidated by a smaller head and think you've got to hit the middle of the club, mm. and then all that happens is you tense up and tighten up and miss the centre more often. So some players prefer a bigger head, some prefer an eater head shape. Mm. So you know, what we can see from this is you know, we don't need to go. We don't need to change head style very much because right. actually your strike has, your accuracy of strike and shot has tightened up massively by the shaft weight change. Okay. And this is a, if you like, a more average size of head anyway? Or? It's still a relatively player style head. You know, it's, mm. still, it's very much shape wise and size, you know, heel, the toe and top line are, are yeah. quite a neat head shape. Yeah. Um, but we've automatically got, this is already giving you a bit more margin of error than your current heads. Yeah. 
but I've pushed headweight just a fraction heavier. Okay. Okay, have a look at the line. I'm just going to show the, that picture on the line. So we're looking at the line, it might be massively clear. I'll get James to let me know whether that's visible. You see that line there? So line-wise, it's pointing just a little bit towards the toe. So we could, that shows that the club's coming in just slightly up. I mean, half a degree, not massively. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do one more to cross-reference that. Got you. Um, that's how we're kind of looking at the line <coughs> angle. So um, we're aiming for it to go straight up the club face. Is that right? Yeah, again, because your shot shape's very neutral, you can use the lie to compensate a bit for a shot shape if you really want to. Mm. So if your miss is right, then you make it more upright. Mm. The, the loft gears the ball left um, a little bit. So you can use it to compensate for a, uh, a shot shape if you really need to. For you, we don't. So we're okay. looking for it to be dead flat. So a little bit flatter than standing in with where you swing, your hands are quite low. Yeah, so hence okay. a little flatter than standard. Okay. Oh, and there was the bad one. Okay. That didn't help you, I'm afraid. That's right. I'm gonna. I made the head heavier as well. Oh, okay. So I did. Yeah. I kind of tested two things in one. There. I'm yeah. gonna take that. I think that's pretty clear. We'll take that weight off. <coughs> there you go, James. That was the comedy shot that you're after. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that was about a half a swing weight point. So okay. about a gram on the head. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, it really can be that little. Uh, you mm. know, some players are very sensitive to it. Some, some less so. Okay. So um, what I did before Ian hit that last shot was I added a little bit of lead tape to the back of the head, just to, just to where we're kind of fine tuning in swing weight, just to test see what happens if we push that head weight a little bit more. So what happened was where there wasn't one of those shots even remotely close before. Head just gets, I'm gonna exaggerate, a little bit later, and then that opens it up and puts mm. the hosel. So some players would end up ripping it around and flipping it. Right. Because you're not naturally handsy, because mm. the shaft weight's in a good place, the head just lags. Yeah, okay. Um, so this should clear through a little bit more easily. Okay. I'll come back. There is a question that I'll come back to very shortly. So a little lower on the face. Yeah. A little lower on the face. So, yeah, and the line's still just a very fraction. So we're looking at half a degree difference from mm. where this one is. Um, so there's not, I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to pop, a, I'm going to make this line more obvious just because it's not. I didn't catch, much, catch that much of the face. <laughs> so that's the mark on that last one. So a little lower on the face, but still, still pointing just a little bit towards the toe side, so that means the club's coming in there. So we just bring the toe down a fraction. Mm. Um, uh, to answer the question on flex, flex is <laughs> very unimportant really in the grand scheme of things. Um, between um, some of it's about a player's uh, preference on feel. So the steel fibers actually play very, very strong to flex because of the construction, the core and the weave on the outside, they play a really very, very stable structure. So the regular initial is the equivalent of a stiff and a steel. So actually mm. there is, what I don't want to do is I don't want to go stiffer and knock the flight down. There's plenty of structural rigidity in this. Um, that's why even with the I-110 on tour, they don't use an X for, I'm not aware for any of the players, mm. because it's already that stable. There's so much more material in this than a steel shaft. So, right. um, so actually we would, well, don't want to take spin down, I want to leave a little bit on. Mm -hmm. So that's where keeping in the you know, inverted commas regular, um, so it plays stiffer than any steel shaft of this weight that I know. Okay. So, so, so that's where sometimes with the flex you'd use the, um, so I try to multitask miserably and failing. Mm -hmm. um, you get progressions in weight with some of the flexes on shafts. So mm. you can use the flex to fine tune in the timing a little bit. Um, these ones, they are non identical. So um, there's just no need to go that bit stiffer. Uh, I'm going to get a couple of other heads to compare with now as well. So similar styles, but I don't mm. want something to knock the ball flight down. No, okay. And, and a lot, I mean, that, that club had performed really well. So a lot of this is going to be um, really about your preferences from a, um, it's quite subjective actually, this bit I think we'll find. Uh, if 
I can find the heads that I'm looking for. Ah, there's one there, and, and the other one must be in one of the other bays. We haven't got the, the I-230. The I-230 head, or it's just been, or um, it's not jumped out to me, that's the other option. Oh, it might be, um, <coughs> you see if it's next door. Yeah. Right. And when you're talking about ball flights, are you mm. bothered about how high the shot goes, or what are you looking at? Yeah, so certain kind of launch and spin characteristics. Um, so, uh, let me go into, uh, not one, where are we? That one there. So, um, now, and this is partly where we'd look at ball potentially. Mm. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, you get plenty of launch on your shots. So, it's not, we don't need to, if I go to the average on this, we don't need to take that launch angle up much more, but okay. I don't want the proportion of spin to drop anymore. So, there are some heads that are going to promote higher launch, <coughs> lower spin, and mm. some, like, so the 223 head. Isn't a, isn't a massively high launching head, but retains a little bit of spin. Okay. Um, so you know, that, from a numbers point of view, uh, I'll add in a couple here. So the averages for those shots, you're at 87 feet flight height, so mm. 29 yards. Mm. So people always talk about, oh, 90 yards as being a nice number. Now it depends a bit on your club speed as to what optimum is, but that's a good height and you're getting it landing just over 45 degrees. Okay. So that, again, 45 is a, <laughs> sort of magic number that if you can get there, is that right? it means there's enough, it's landing steep enough to not require a ton of spin to stop it. Right. So it, it's... It's not coming in like a bullet. Yeah. Um, but also you're not up <coughs> at 50 feet, so it's not <laughs> moonballed and coming down with ice yeah. on it. So um, so flight-wise, is it in a good place? It is in a good place. So I'm going to just change over the, uh, the head. Right, so... And is there a spin rate that's really a, a sort of a golden outcome that you aim for? Uh, again, it, dep it depends a bit on your angle of attack. Okay. Uh, so that, like everything, everything we do here, is, it depends on. Um, generally speaking, in the low to mid 5000s. Mm. But because you're slightly on the shallower side mm. and you launch it higher, mm. if we had that sort of spin, it would start to balloon up a little bit. So, okay. Um, you know, where you're a couple of degrees down rather than say four, someone four degrees down is going to launch it more like 16 and a half and spin it five and a half. Someone who's dead flat is going to launch it 19, 20 and spin it at four, six. So it, it's a, a bit of a sliding scale as mm. to what, what works best from a flight point of view for someone. <coughs> okay. So there's, al there's always a, there's always a definitely maybe in there. There's no somewhere. simple answer. No, they're really, well, it's, it's not complex. It just depends on your delivery. Okay. And club speed. So you hire someone's speed, mm. you don't need the extra launch angle to get it to land steep because the ball's already up there. Right. So, so mm. someone like you, know, someone like Matt, for example, who's got stupid amounts of speed. Yeah. You know, he's got to launch it low because he's always going to spin it with okay. that amount of rip and friction across the back of the ball. So yep. he's looking to keep launch angle down. And if it, otherwise it's just into, <laughs> right. you know, NASA would need to be careful. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. So what have we got here? So this is the T100. Okay. That felt good. Let's <laughs> have we had a set, have we had a uh, case where the numbers are compelling but the client doesn't like the head? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Um, but the player's preference is a massive part of it. You've, you're the one using it. So you've, you've got to look forward to using it. Um, yeah, true. That's just, just popping the flight up a little bit more. Okay. So this one's got a bit more tungsten in the sole. Mm. It's just flaring, the spin's okay, but it's just, it's just looping the launch angle up a little bit more. So where that has an effect is when you get to the shorter arms, we don't want it to powder puff up. So right. just not quite flighting it as okay. well. Not quite as efficient on board. I mean, it's, not bad, mm. um, not quite as efficient on ball speed. Yeah, I mean, so that it, it, it's, 
and ultimately we all play for fun. Uh, and I think the, um, well, <laughs> or should be playing for fun. Uh, no, we all play for fun. And, and it is a case of, you know, it's, um, you've got to look forward to getting the clubs out of the bag. If, you, if, if in the back of your head you're going, I know it works, but it looks horrible, mm. then automatically you're, you're not going to forgive the club for a bad swing. You're gonna, just going to resent them after a while. So sure. it's, it's because of the, the amount of options out there now, you can pick a head option that ticks both boxes mm. um, and not compromise too much on performance. So you would never need to... <laughs> Matt's, Matt's, Matt's lurk, he's clearly uh, ears are burning. <laughs> Even with even with low launch, NASA still on red alert. Yep, that's, that's, that's very true. And it's actually there, there are almost more. Yeah, you know, we find fitting wise there are challenges at lower speeds where you're trying to get enough launch on the ball, because forgiving heads the lofts have got so strong that mm. you know they, it's just hard to flight them, and that is being rectified by some brands this year. Then there are also difficulties at the other end of the scale for someone like Matt, who, you know, you're trying to keep the ball down. So, yeah, um, yeah that's why the, the the large range of heads is really important to then not have to fight a design or bend something too much and then compromise mm. the sole profiles and things to, to get the best results. What used to be a seven is now lofted a, as a six, six or. Uh, yeah, well, yeah I mean, that? I mean, there are some some heads where they've. What was a four is a six now. Um, <laughs> it's uh, you actually don't need that low aloft loft anywhere. It's a thirty mm. degree, quite a traditional loft actually. Oh, that was definitely a neat swing. And what we are seeing, it's been interesting <coughs> the last couple of years, is yeah. where there's more weight taken out the middle of the heads and, and tungsten the sole. Mm. I'm seeing more. I'm, I'm more and more convinced that some players that just doesn't suit. Yeah. Whereas I think the first swing was just a ropey swing. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> they do creep in now and again. Yeah. Okay. It looks higher on the screen. Is it? Uh, yeah, actually, launched back down a little bit from the T100. Okay. Let's see one more. So this one's the ping the I230. Okay. Might feel a little bit more hollow. Okay. So it'll have a bit of a different sound than the Mizuno head. Good, good ball speed. Uh, yeah, let's just pop the spin down. Mm. I watched one more of that. I don't know whether that mm. was... Uh, the only reason I'm just questioning, I don't know whether there was a hair of ground ball in that, mat and ball at the okay. same time. But uh, that one spun a little bit less. That's a bit low on the face, I suspect. Hmm. Yeah, no. And this is where between, between those, there'll be slight flight variances, but then yeah. there's a little bit of, go back to that question of what do you enjoy hitting more? Mm. You know, the feedback off the heads is gonna be quite different. I'm gonna get one other head to compare, but okay. if that one's low on the face, and you've only dropped five, six yards, so it's, yeah, you know, that's still on the green, mm. unless you've gone to a really tight pin at the front. <laughs> yeah. So. Looking well. <laughs> Good for the health. Yeah. Have you got some now? <laughs> I could do with a glass. <laughs> so for those that are unaware, in the, in the background is a uh, good friend of ours who makes his who, who makes his produces his own wine, which uh, is very tasty, and uh, he's had a good last week by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a, sounds tough. Someone, someone's got to do it, Robin. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> for, the, for the benefit of mankind. <laughs> Beautiful. Right, just a little bit more. So, just going to have a look at the uh, P770 here. The new, this is the new one. Um, I don't know how long we've been out yeah, here. About that. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely found me the right shaft. We're now just trying to zero in on the, on, on the head, yeah. But um, it's all instructive. Right. Because even though I come in here 
every week. You know, I'm not a geek and I don't understand a lot of the nuances. So, yeah, mm. it's just nice when it goes well. <laughs> So P seven seven. So this this again is going to have a little bit of different feedback off the face. Okay. Um, probably sound wise, it might sound a little, it might feel a bit faster off the face. Okay. It's certainly kind of geared towards that from a design point of view. Um, and question about am I are we factoring in a perceived effect of mat versus turf, spin and strike? So spin. So off turf, I mean, launch is fractionally lower and spin is fractionally more, but as a, mm. a, as a um, formula, you end up the same distance. Um, okay. So um, what, you, what I am factoring in is strike point on the face. You can hear the contact. It's more mm. kind of quality of strike. Right. So these mats are, same ones used by Titleist at their performance center in Woburn, mm. um, in that there's enough pile that it gives and moves a little bit like turf. So it's yeah. as close as we can get it to turf. Okay. Um, the, if you struggle off mats, it's probably those horrible ones with a very hard rubber base and about a millimetre thin mm. um, bit of fuzz on the top. And those can be pretty horrible for joints and things as well. Yeah, so a little bit more speed off this head. Mm. Um, ball speed's up, the, the smash has gone up to one, like that on 144. But the spin's come down as well. Mm. So yes, we're half, you know, half a club longer, right. you know, six, seven yards longer. Um, but it's coming in hotter as well. So if the MO was just getting some irons I can hit as long as possible yeah. without going kind of big and clunky, that's a great head. Right. For me, I, pref I prefer, <laughs> now if you particularly enjoyed hitting those, mm. you know, great, they're working well. We might have to mm. just pull the loft up a little bit, mm. um, but I prefer the spin off the other heads just from a control and consistency point of view. So However, what's the angle these are landing at then? That one's, well, they're still up at 45 degrees, okay. but this, that one, the spin's down at just, uh, just well, 4,160. So that's more of a five iron spin. So okay. it's not like it's you know, knuckled spin and there's nothing to work mm. with, but it's a club strong on spin. So you know, we're at the moment you're up to four iron and the four iron's then gonna be down at 3,000 spin, which is mm. like a two iron spin. Okay. So it's, it's that knock-on effect at the top end of the bag. Um, I, now, we can loft it up a little bit and you can get a few hundred of revs of those spin, those few hundred revs of spin back. Mm. But we're having to add spin. You could change ball. You could go to a, you know, if we go to, I'll, I'll, case in point, let's go to a different ball. Mm. If I put you know, something that we know to be a fairly high spin ball and we put a Pro View one x down, so it's going to feel, yeah. feel very different. We should see spin go up. So we're four two. So you'd guesstimate the same shot would give us what? Between the soft feel and that, I'd like to think it'd be about four six. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Like to think. <laughs> so it's a much harder sound. Yeah. Four, felt six. Like, there felt like a good oh, I've done this before. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> well done. But that also shows that yeah. the comment about you can't get the most out of the Pro View X, you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just technically the harder core is designed with driver for the top end speed. Okay. Um, so iron wise, that that's where I mean that's almost an extreme. The soft field's quite a low spin ball, mm. the Pro View X is the higher spin ball. Right. Um, so you know that one. Again, hit really well, ball, you know, club speeds up a little, ball speeds up a little bit. Mm. Um, that's then retained a little bit of spin. So um, it's, that's going to have the same sort of effect with the other heads as well. Mm. So well, really from a ball speed point of view, that's quite hard. It's, it's, again, it's whether the experience to hit it, but this all goes back to them, what mm. you enjoy hitting. That's definitely going to have a harder feel and you've got to change ball mm. when it gets to summer to, to when the greens firm to keep the control when it lands. Right. So it's, but it's a very different experience to hit it with. So mm. that has knock-on effects on short game, chipping and putting control, that mm. side of things. So you know, if you've played 10 years with a Strix on software, which is a very soft core compared to the Pro View One X, your short game control is gonna feel really pretty different. Yeah, there's no control in my short game. Don't worry <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, there's a raw distance. As long as you change ball, yeah. that's a longer club by about half a club. Yeah. Funnily enough, you, you know, we've not really talked openly about this, but a lot of 
uh, quite a few comments come in on the survey we've done about mm. ball fitting. Yeah. I think a lot of people are interested to go through that experience. I mean, ball fitting is a tricky one. Yeah. To do a ball fitting really properly takes a huge amount of time. Yeah. Um, because you've got to do it with drive, you've got to do it with six iron, you've got to do it with wedge. Right. You've got to do it with tightless, tailor-made, swicks on, different ball types, different constructions. Yeah. So for us, from a commercial point of view, mm. it's not a very good use of our time mm. because you're going to have to take up two hours worth in the bay and you have to charge a hell of a lot for it yeah. because it's time. Yeah. Between a Pro V1 and a TP5X or Pro V1, Pro V1X, that's an easy one. Mm. Um, the difficult bit is for us from a, you know, how much time in the bays it's going to take up. Yeah and making it worthwhile, mm. that's then quite hard. That's, that's the bit we've got to balance up yeah. with, considering yeah, how point. many fits we've got coming through. Mm. But, um, and so for you where your game's at, I would say, I would probably err towards, was it the cost that comes into it? Mm. You're going to gain more from a spin control on the wedges by going to a premium board of some shape or mm. form, mm. Um, versus the Srixons, if you've got a you know, wedge to a tight pin, it's going to spin more with a, premium ball you're going to gain more there mm. than you're going to lose in the long game because you're not as we see with these you're not spraying it all over the no. place so it's not a left right dispersion side of it yeah so i would certainly advocate going to a or certainly when the ground everything's plugging out there anyway certainly when the ground firms up going to the premium ball to get mm. the spin control with the wedges mm. okay. um, i think for you with the iron heads it depends on whether raw whether Distance is a premium thing, mm. considering we can pick up. I think we can pick up. Well, your best shots with your current ones are probably going to be three to five yards back from a good one with any of these, or maybe you know, maybe nearing a club to the tailor maids. Mm. Um, but the or whether the that kind of softer feel. Whereas I've, I've lost my train of thought. So, so we're going to pick up a little bit anyway from consistency of the best shots that drop back just isn't really happening yeah. nowhere near in the same way mm. um, so you were already gaining there it's whether you want to supercharge it effectively with that head and gain mm. as much distance as possible or keep a little bit more softness of feel and a little bit more consistency of what the ball does when it lands with you know, probably the, the mp223 would be the mm. bigger those would be the two that i think you keep the maximum feel and control out of the mizuno mm. and maximum distance out of this one and it's which one ends up being the more important yeah. one for you but that one requires more of a change in ball to the high spin mm. ball to get it to optimum spin in summertime well, the hole the hole in my bag <laughs> not the one that lets in water but uh <laughs> is 200 yards so my four iron i can't get it 200 yards even on mm. a, a off a tee yeah so uh, yeah 190 195 max really and my hybrid stroke five wood are sort of 215 so I've, i'm i'm kind of stuck for that 205 yeah. ish sort of shot all right that's what yeah but so be all of, both of these are going to get closer to you and actually so that top end of the bag that the shaft's gonna make the biggest difference because mm. that's where it's, it's maximum speed through so the lighter yeah. weight makes it easier to generate that speed proportionally yeah. more at that end of the set um, and you're going to get more you're going to get some you've got no face tech on this forearm you've got face right. tech on both mm. a little bit more speed on the tailor so you, you could argue the tailor made's going to get you there probably probably going to get you there just slightly more easily mm -hmm. But it's also going to get you there likely with a little bit of flatter flight mm. in terms of spin. Mm. Okay, so um, you're going to get a damn sight closer to where you want to be with both ones. Um, yeah, it's you could you could this is one you can find arguments both ways around. There's a there's a good gain to be had at that top end through yeah. club ball speed off the face because the extra bit of face kick and the lighter shaft weight and the extra forgiveness on the heads. Mm. There's cumulatively quite a big gain at the four iron, five iron end of yeah. things. Um, it's probably a case of a couple more with that. I'll put, <coughs> as a kind of a marker, I'm gonna put just a standard Pro V1 down. Okay. Just to see where spin is and then compare that with the Mizuno as well. This is just a regular Pro V1 here, is it? Yeah. The, uh, that one's the X, because I wanted to okay. max out spin, oh, but I'll I get the, yep. the standard one. <clears throat> and the thing is, this is where it's all, there are lots of things that go into the melting pot of decisions to make, mm, and, and mm. so it's, yeah, it's where there are lots of shades of grey with fitting. Look at that, seem to go. 
Yeah, I mean, ball speed is is good with this head. I mean, you're you know one eighteen, one nineteen ball speed with this head. Mm. We're at one fifteen with the others. That okay. one's. Yeah, say we lost three hundred revs of spin with the Pro V one mm. um, versus uh, versus the X, which is yeah. what it should do. Let's see one yep. more with that. I'll pop the Mizuno back on. And they're all tending to drift a bit right, but I, I'm kind of okay with that, right? Because well, it's fine. all well, consistent. That's fine because that's what that, but that also reflects what the, the swing's doing is moving a little left in the faces square. So yeah. that's, it's consistent shot to shot. So right. that's just, if you don't want it to move left to right, then move the swing into out a little bit. Um, so, so my path is a little bit... Just a little out to it. It's exactly as you said it was earlier. It's yeah. a little bit out to in. Yeah. But where we've gone to this lighter weight, the face is stable, so it's not yes. breaking down left. Yeah, it's really good ball speed off this head for you. Um, okay. So, but it'll have that, when we swap back to the Mizuno, it should feel a little bit softer. Because it is a little bit. I don't, see, I don't play enough or care enough. I, I don't think about real feel. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really the outcome. Yep. You know, it's, it's a clickier, louder sort of shot, but I don't really mind. That's, that doesn't bother me. So this, this and that's the Mizuna head back on. Right. <coughs> so what are, what are we predicting for this one? Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit less ball speed, mm -hmm. um, but should be a little bit more spin. Um, so a question saying from Richard Evans, if you like your current irons uh, and want to upgrade, is it best to stick in the same range, same shafts, rather than a totally different brand? Um, ah, there's a strong argument for that. Um, yeah, a strong argument for staying with the same brand. It's familiar. So it's going to be the same sort of feel. You know, there's going to be a lot of yeah, a lot of familiarity to it. I think um, ultimately the answer is: is do you see big enough difference for another product to warrant making a change? Um, but the, the safe option is to stay with the progression on the current product. Yeah, so that one, good hit. One fifteen ball speed. So there is, and, and spins up the four or 500 revs. Mm. So yeah, from a, I mean, the, the tailor made to be fair is a long club for you. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd probably rein it back a bit from a, to not have to go such a high spin proportion mm. of the ball to try to make it work. You can mm. loft up, it's a little higher launch, little lower spin, um, but it's, it's long. It's long that that ball speed on that last hit off you know 145 you know 82.7 club speed 119 ball speed you know the last hit with the Mizuno was was pretty good but you know eight, same club speed but it's four miles an hour mm. four to five miles an hour less ball speed mm. so it is it's kind of hard to ignore that ball speed yeah if if the feel isn't something you go yeah I just don't like the way it feels then there's shot value there to be had I like it I, the contact feels solid mm. you know I like Having just said I'm not bothered about feel, <laughs> actually, mm. it, it does feel really nice. Yeah, they're tailor-made. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't think you can ignore the extra shot value that you're getting no. out of it. Um, so I would go to that as, okay. as a head. I think it's giving you, you know, we're rain the loft back one degree just to get the spin up a couple of hundred revs. But mm. um, I think there's enough extra shot value and ball speed, especially if we're trying to kind of chase up <laughs> to the uh, fiber as much as we can. Yeah. Um, then you're going to see that's where the extra value is going to be. We can graduate lofts if need be to make the distances work down the set to not leave mm. huge gaps at the bottom. Yeah. But it's going to spread out to that top end a bit more easily. So yeah. tailor-made tailor -made it is. All right. Um, let's have another question here. Is the ball speed increase on the... It's not 790, 770. Uh, no, it's not down the loft because I've bent it to the same thing. So that's one thing in the fitting we'll always do is be honest about where the lofts are. So if we were just testing standard versus standard, and if it was the 790, then it would be, that would have a stronger loft. Um, but it's the 770, um, we've got, that's at, um, you know, they're all at 29 degrees. Um, so it, there might be a half a degree difference, um, but we've normalized the lofts as much <coughs> as we can to give representative differences. Okay. Uh, but it's a very fair question, because not many places do. A lot of places would, just not bother about the lofts and not bother looking at the spins as go, look, it's going further. Mm. But all you do then is create issues at another part of the bag. So. Mm. But that is a question that you should, that is a very good one to ask. Wherever you're getting fitted, always ask that, you know, because you know, what you don't want to have is like in your instance, don't want a 26 degree six iron. 
Yeah, right. we need it to be 29. Yeah. Um, so, right. So good size, that's as big a difference than I thought we'd see, both actually in terms of setup, and mm. I, what that head did is it really gave an extra level to the gain in result as well. Yeah. Um, so, and you're getting you know, overall a, a setup which um, gives you a bit more margin of error if you, you know, if you're not going to be playing loads and loads and loads, then actually you can, mm. you know, it's just going to keep the, the shot value that little bit higher. Um, and we're not seeing kind of, it's not like it's giving you flyers. The consistency of that ball mm. speed over those last few is really great. Yeah. So. I mean, dare I say it, it felt a bit wand-like, you know, that, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. that, yeah. that magic connection between me and the thing at the end of my mm. hands. And, and I think yeah, I think the shaft's a lot to do with that, but if you then get that pop off the face as well, yeah. like to, to, to see from where we were consistently kind of you know, 165-ish on the Kithis, you go up to 175 with that tailor made. Mm. So, okay, if we go a degree more off, you're 172, 73, but there's still another six, seven yards on top, which mm. is pretty impressive, mm. yeah. Superb. Did he want to do wedges or did he want to do that in terms of just thinking time-wise, are we, yeah? Good. Sure, we'll yeah, take a, if you've got the time, we'll take yeah. a look. Right. What we call experienced. <laughs> so. What's that? Worn? Yeah. <laughs> worn, Clap, worn, worn or experienced. <laughs> so, and one of the things that's going to happen with any any kind of you know, well used wedge um, is you know the the top edge of the groove rounds off. Which mm. you see the top edge. I don't mm. know how well it'll show on here, but. Um, you know, at the, oh, that one. It's hard to see it on this, but the top edge of those grooves is just starting to, to round off. So you're losing the, the kind of bite that, that top edge is going to get into the back of the ball. That probably didn't come out very well on the camera, but, um, and, and that just means when you get you know, dry conditions, it doesn't make a big difference. Wet conditions or grass between the face and mm. the ball, then it doesn't bite through it and get to the ball. So that's one. Yeah you don't get the grip on the ball and therefore the spin. So you get the one where the ball comes out high, hot, no spin. So I, the competition yeah. I played, uh, it was a foursomes comp a few weeks back um, in horrible conditions. Um, playing partner uses a, um, um, what was it? I think it was a Titleist Tor Soft or something. It's one of the ones without the, the elastic cover. So not a Pro V1 style ball. Mm. And, um, and I played a wedge shot that would normally be a, um, a kind of 100 yard shot and because it didn't grip the face and spin it went 115 <laughs> right which as it soared over the top of the flag I, yeah. I, I loved it when it was in the air but it just went miles and so that's where you that's the the equivalent of the of the um uh flyers that you get out of out of rough Gotcha. So. Just sorry, just because of the, the water in the groove or on the or, ball? Or? Well, what it doesn't do is say the groove doesn't bite and it doesn't get the grip on the back of the ball at yeah. lower speeds and when you've got yeah. this much loft yeah. because it's a rounded edge, so it doesn't cut through and grab the ball. Right. And then it, it slips up the face, launches high, no spin. Yeah. So what would be interesting, this is a good, a good experiment of looking at what sort of spin you get with a soft feel and then with mm. a pro v but um, mm. so an issue with this is going to be just a kind of comfortable three-quarter shot just okay. to get a couple of those so again we're going to be looking at um going to be looking at shaft weights timing it's going to be less of an issue at this end of the bag i think that might have been too comfortable <laughs> i don't know that's no, okay okay uh, question uh Oh, a hollow body on this. Now, 790, it's really about the face and the loft, so they've, they've exaggerated the, the face. The frame is a little bit stiffer, but um, lower loft and a faster face to get as much distance and, and uh, as little spin as possible. Um, and then bending loft affecting sole interaction, comparing heads to heads. As long as you're not bending them more than a couple of degrees, um, most of them have a bit of camber to the sole that can help deal with that. But um, yeah, you don't want to be excessively bending. One or two degrees is fine. Those are three Strixons. So, okay, and then I'm interested to go over to the Pro V. Mm -hmm. So, where with these, so these are the KBS Tour 90 as with, so with the, though that set, we kept the shaft the same all the way through. Yeah. Um, now, into the wedges, there's less, of, there's likely to be less of a need to go as light because, because we're not looking to get as much speed and, and kick through. Mm. 
often will go a little bit heavier. And actually with that set, there wasn't the need to, but okay. where we're dropping into the graphite and the irons, that's where having the, the steel is a bit more feel of the bottom half mm. as a swing loses that bit of kick and acceleration, you're using the weight to drop the club in the back of the ball. So chances are, these might not be, from a setup point of view, might mm. be pretty close. Okay, mm. but I, w I wouldn't worry about the transition between the wedge with a composite and then my lob wedge with... No, I mean, there are, there are kind of two ways of looking at it. One would be, I mean, there's a, you know, it's that sort of, te well, into the pitch wedge, because weights graduate through the set, you, yeah. You're getting more towards sort of 90, 91 gram in the pitch wedge within those oh, shafts. Okay. Yeah. Um, as long as we, we use the constant weight, which, which progresses up in weight rather than a, a parallel, which is flat weight. Um, so you're only at a eight to 10 gram differential, gotcha. about 10%, which is normally the kind of progression you'd make. Okay. Um, but the heavier weight's gonna be better for the more kind of three quarter-ish swings, the control swings yeah. in principle. Okay, want a very different sound. Yeah, so, um, well, look at those. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's just call that a touch heavy. <coughs> so, it's about, uh, it's only sort of five, six hundred revs different. Mm. The, that first one you hit was the cleaner hit, and it yeah. launched at just over 30 degrees versus 32. Yeah. So, you generally, so there's a two degree launch angle change, mm. and the spin went from, let's say, 8,500 on average to 9,000. Mm. So spin per degree of launch is up. So the ball itself, is the, the, soft, the more elastic covers, it's gripped the face, it's pulled the launch angle down and maintained a bit more spin. So it doesn't okay. have quite as much of a loop to it. It's coming in a little lower. Okay. A little bit more spin. Yeah. Um, in terms of you know, timing technique-wise, looks, it's there's a little bit of left in there, a mm. little bit, mm. um, not a vast amount. Mm. Definitely nowhere near the same kind of drop in behind as with the irons. But no. I'll put something together to to replicate going that little bit lighter and okay. check. Okay. A few questions come through. I will. Uh, um, question about the two two fives. The only thing with the two two fives were into that that stronger loft. So what that does is that's going to mean that that the, we can't bend those back up very much. We don't want to go down to a 27 degree loft. So that's why I'm not going for the 225s or the 790s. Um, what driver am I playing at the moment? Still the M4. I'll be testing out <laughs> them all in a <laughs> few weeks time once the last one's come in. Uh, and then how much difference would you see based on ball type? Pro V1, Pro V1 X, AVX. Um, Pro V1 to Pro V1 X, fractional launch angle, but about 300 revs on spin. Pro V1 X being higher on both launch angle and spin. Um, and then um, the AVX is a lower spin ball, noticeably lower spin. So that's going to be about 500, 600 revs less spin than the Pro V1. Um, so let's go. And so I'm just going to pick the right shaft here. So you're not thinking about head right now, you're focused on the shaft again to get that right, eh? I'm gonna test that in first, yeah. yeah. I mean, with a, I mean from, a, from a wedge head point of view, so one of the questions on the wedge for you is, you've, you're currently playing a 51, 57 degree measured lofts, yep. is whether you're, so the, 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 there's no absolute right or wrong. You can, you know, two wedges below pitch wedge or three, you know, a lot of players, play one or other there aren't there's no definite you must be one or the other mm. um, some players are more comfortable playing two because it's obvious what the right club is um, okay. I think for you it's whether you felt there's a need to go more lofted than the 57 um, yeah. if you're not necessarily playing a huge amount do you want to overcomplicate it um, you can always add one in if you felt yeah. there's a need for a old champagne flop shop um, <laughs> And so I, I, having added a wedge, I've gained a bit of versatility. Um, but, but then I'm hitting a pitch wedge 135 yards. Mm. So, so Yeah, there's more room to expand that part yeah, of the bag. Usually. Exactly, yeah. So let's just see. So going into composite, into this is a wedge-specific composite. Okay. Good 
contact, good spin. Okay, I'll see once a little more left. I'll see one more. Left. And that would be my concern about a graphite wedge is that you yeah. just lose, we have to load up the head weight to get the feel for it and then right. it gets a bit detached. Okay. Mm, just got that little bit of a left. Mm. It looks like, I guess, good spin onto that, but it looks like it's just getting that way on you rather than like when we went to the graphite and the iron, you can see it drop in and leave the face there. Yeah. So I'm going to go back into the steel. <coughs> it's not my alignment. I'm aligned. So no, okay. path, as with your iron tool, is only one degree out to win. Okay. But the first one, the face closed in by five degrees. So it shut five degrees to path. So it's six impact. degrees left of target. Yeah. yeah. How much of that is happening around the ball, like in that couple of feet around impact? Um, I mean, the, the face is, is rotating the whole way through the okay. swing. So it, it's, you're likely to get, if it gets light and you over overload it, then it's going to be a flip. So mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a quick one. Okay. Um, you know, second one, you manage to manage it, but mm. the, default, the default is going that way. And I don't particularly want to see that if we can help it. So I'm actually just going to... So ideally we'll have the same kind of profile as my iron. Yeah, it'd be nice to have that one where, yeah, it, it's like, still like to start slightly left. Yeah. But if we can get it to hold or drop back to the right, yeah. then again, it just means more distance and spin consistency. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. Thank you for all the questions, guys, by the way. Really appreciate the uh, interaction. Okay, so that's into a Already? steel there. Almost fade fast hybrid head at the moment. I'm going to I'm going to hold um, hold thought on that for a couple of weeks until the new tightless TSRs are out. Um, that's definitely a better delivery. Okay, so it's square. So still that little. So fresh head. We're getting another couple of hundred revs of spin. I mean, okay. this is completely dry conditions, but. Yeah. Um, mm, that one a little bit thin, a bit that one. Near the neck. I picked it up. Okay, so all, that one just looked like Jess almost fell a little bit onto it, yeah. but the, the, the face, you know, is like half a degree closed rather than four or five degrees closed. So right. certainly staying in steel in the wedge. Yeah. Um, just take it down to a slightly shorter shot. So we had like a 50, yeah. 60 yard, a 50 yard, just a little half swing. Okay. Okay. okay let me just put, I'm going to put a little bit more head weight on that. Okay. Just a little bit to see what happens. Just see if we can just hold that face angle a little bit longer. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm at, I said, um, you know, fade bus hybrid, the, the King Tech from Cobra, you can load up the toe a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think the, you know, certainly the Stealth 2 Plus hybrid is not a draw bast head. Um, there, aren't, there aren't many fade bars hybrid heads, um, just because it's not what they're generally designed for. Um, so, yeah, you're more likely to find them neutral to a draw bus, but at least the King Tech, you can wake the toe up a little bit. Mm, I wonder whether that just gets it. Does that feel like you've got to work the head through a little bit more? Uh, like with the irons, you can just turn, collect, and, and just you know, easy through. It's more ball. of a conscious so Did that look like you had to, maybe yeah. you had to fetch it through a touch? Yeah. Just have another go. Yeah, just having to, what I'm going to do, because this is a very margin, I mean, certainly the steels, we're not seeing that face shut two, three degrees. No. It's one, one and a half maximum. Okay. So, and that, all that will happen on course is you'll default to aiming probably two or three yards right and just That's hitting right. that shot straight at it. Yeah. I mean, that one, to put into context, is only 
nine foot left. It looks okay. like nine yards left on yeah. the screen, but okay. it's only nine foot I'll left. I'll take that. I'm just going to give you your current one back, but I'm going to weight the head up a little bit more just to see, because they're very, very slightly different shafts, these two. Just to see. But again, my bad wedge is always a, a, a shocking miss left, you know. I, there's a, a tendency to get a little on the shallower side. You can see as you yeah. play, there's a tendency just to fall back a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And that will exaggerate it. Okay. It could well be because you're having to do that with the irons, that's mm. going to feed into the wedge swing. Mm. So um, it's really wedge wise, if you can make sure you keep your weight on that front leg and just stay on top of the shot a little bit yeah. more, that should lose the majority of that big miss left. Uh, if located in Ireland, do you ship? Yes, we do. Um, ideally, we'd always do a, you know, a, in an ideal world, you do a, a loft lie dynamic lie collection uh, on co um, check on collection, but um, we appreciate it's not, not quite as easy if you're on the emerald dial. So, yeah, so what this shows me is face to path has gone back to, you know, it's point 0.1, but square, mm. absolutely square, not square and a little bit closed. Yeah. So what this shows me is the shafts in your current wedges are still great. A little okay. bit more head weight actually on the partial shots just helps that face control a little bit. Yeah. What we can see with this one, we've gone back to this and you're down to 7.3 on spin. So a fresh face is going to get you a more consistent spin. Yeah. Um, but the shaft itself is working, is, is really good. It's so, okay. You know, whilst yep. that's the KBS Tour 90, the Tour Light is to all intents and purposes, the same shaft. Mm. Yeah, so we would we'll be going with that. Are these discontinued now then, or? <sighs> Technically, yes, although mm. the Tour Light in the regular and the Tour 90 in the regular are near as damn identical. Mm. Um, the step pattern's the same. Um, they've added an X in, which is 105 grams, so they're kind of 95, 100, 105, which was the, the R and the S in the Tour 90s were 95 and 100. So yeah. it's, it's a, it's a, um, Four. Um, it's a progression on. They've got, it's a it's a regeneration of it, but right. to all intents and purposes. So I'm going to get. I want to look at the the bounce profile. I'm just going to yep. get the LIBOR to have a look at that. <laughs> Thanks. So this is where we use this bit of plastic to look at strike point on the sole. So I want to look at which bit of the sole you're using through. So this is where we can look at bounce and what's appropriate. And, um, so this had this quite a curious sole design, didn't it? With the little Yeah, and out. that was really kind of to, to let the, I'm not sure I'll show them on yeah. there. So um, the, the notch out the back, something that, that uh, Ram, I think, used to do years back. Um, so it keeps the bounce either side and a little notch out the middle, which technically allows it to work through a bit more. Mm. It's, it's, a, you know, it, it's an interesting design. It's, it's one which probably has more of a relevance in sand. Okay. Um, but uh, for turf, don't know. I think there, there's more of an argument for trailing off the heel and the toe mm. than the middle, mm. uh, in, in my opinion, kind of looking at how, how the club head and the turf work together. Mm having a little bit more width in the centre gives you a bit more margin of error on wetter, on damp turf. Okay. Um, which is why you don't really see it done by many people. Um, so, initially just that kind of fairly neutral 60-70 kind of you know, mm -hmm. half to three quarter swing. No, this is, this is looking at which bit of the sole front to back, so bounce side of things. So we don't use this for lie because a lot of time you can back off it a bit. But what it does show is, as on this one, what, uh, what I'm looking at is where, how near the front edge is that starting? Um, so we can see that the, the front edge of that mark, well, the mark's very much in the center. So I'm not looking whether it's heel toe on this, it's more front to back. So Ian not being particularly steep into the back of the ball, if we go heavy bounce, it's mm. just going to mark the back edge. Gotcha. Um, just see one, I'll put a fresh one. If you mm. had to play a little kind of higher, softer shot. So I would say with this sole shape, you might struggle in softer sand. Okay. 
just because there's not a lot of soil to use to cushion the contact. Tight turf, firm yeah. sand, fine. Um, but softer sand, it might want to dig in a little bit. I struggle in sand in, in, all, in all conditions, don't worry. So then if you've got a, this one is if you've just got a little, you've got 30 odd yards bunker in the way, you just need to kind of okay. play one up and soften, soften the flight up. Okay, so you work the club, you don't kind of hit down and across it, but you work no. the club under a little bit more. So yeah. that one, as you can see, is a little bit further back. Okay. Yeah. So again, I'll show this to camera. So where Ian with his, he works the head that way a little bit more. So that one, strike wise, you can see is much nearer the back edge. So yes, that notch actually gets out of the way. The problem mm. is you've still got a fairly heavy heel and toe that, that right. kind of catch either side. Gotcha. So I would rather see a head that gradu graduates a little bit more and trails off the, the heel a bit more. Okay. Um, because that's Because I'm slightly shallow, right? Uh, well, because, you, because you're working the head that way, yeah. you don't need lots of bounce, but we want it to almost, if you've got a wider sole, when it's soft, you can use that to, to glide it through yeah. and, and you've got a bit of margin of error. Problem with that, if you get it slightly wrong, either the leading edge catches, yeah. Or there's just not a lot you can, or the, the, the back heel and toe are going to catch mm. because they're still catching, okay. they're, they're sitting deeper than that middle section. Yeah. So yeah. they're still going to catch and bounce it. Yeah. So if we have a sole that graduates off, then the whole thing can mm. almost sort of skid through. Okay. Um, now, from a head point of view, there are rather a lot that do that. And especially if, we're, if, you're, if you're comfortable with where you are, I think if you've mm. struggled with bunkers and things, then that sole shape is going to help massively. Yeah but also it helps keep the versatility for those sort of shorter swings. Um, there are quite a few that do it. Okay. <laughs> so, and there's a question come in. I'll just have a quick look at that. Um, am I surprised that other brands don't offer the, the back cutout, Cobra Store's the current model? Um, I think the thing with that cutout, I'm not surprised they don't because the problem with the cutout is the middle bit gets out of the way, but the two either side, mm. as I was saying to Ian, still, the two bits either side <coughs> still catch and kick. And that's where the majority of them will drop off the heel and toe. If you've got the, the ball below your feet, you want the heel to get out of the way. So a heavy heel side is just going to catch and kick it a bit more. Mm. So that, that, that more of a, you take that, you're more of a graduated drop off into the heel, drop off into the toe, rounding off. It's just a little bit more versatile. And so it's, it's very much almost a signature of the Cobra wedges over the years. But yeah. I, I personally don't, and even now, the heel and the toe are still more graduated than they've ever been. Mm. It's just a bit of a signature for them, I think. Mm. Um, so, I mean, one of the things you can, if you wanted to, there is the option of keeping the branding consistent through. Um, however, with the tailor-made wedges, they do have the rusty face, which not everyone is that keen on. I used to have the the first ever rusty, trusty, rusty. Oh, the trusty, rusty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then they, they stopped being called the trusty, rusties because they rusted. Um, <laughs> so that's got that graduation gotcha. profile okay. to it. So you know, what the tailor-made wedges have is that softened heel, so and that bit of bit of a camber too. That so they've got a slightly beveled leading edge, which stops it getting too too sharp on soft conditions. Right. Then that nice sort of shallow bit in the middle that you can use for a standard shot, but then the back edge gets out of the way. So mm -hmm. the sole shape is is appropriate okay. if you wanted that continuity of brand, mm. but it all depends whether you like the, the rusty face, which not everybody yeah, does. It doesn't bother me. Um, I mean, the ball's going to know very little difference. So the, the Mizuno wedge you're hitting with, mm. that produced good spin. It, it's, there's the least difference of any <coughs> part of the bag. Once you get the bounce right and the mm. loft with the wedges, okay. because they're all limited, again, groove width, groove depth, the edging, the shaping of them, they're limited by the laws of the game. Mm. There's only so much tread you can get between the grooves to get spin. So it can boil down to you know, shape, brand. Uh, it probably, I'm trying to think if there's anything that stands out. I wouldn't necessarily go down the ping route, the, the mm. width of the sole, that could get a little bit, little bit clumsier. Um, so Vokey is super popular, isn't it? So Vokey is very popular. Um, is that a performance thing or a brand thing? Um, a bit of both. Okay. A bit of both. They've been they've been very strong brand wise over the years yeah. because you know design wise they were the first ones to do the milling on the face. Mm. You know that spin milled. Um, again, they all do you know that kind of sole shape where we could blend that in. Mm. Dropped heel and toe. They've they've just 
they've become so popular on, it's like the Pro V1, they've become so popular on tour, such mm. a strong brand attached, the trust in the product is so strong. Mm. Um, they're not the softest feeling head in the world, they're a cast head, okay. whereas the Mizuno, the Taylor are actually forged head. Mm. Um, but that, uh, that doesn't, again, the ball doesn't know any difference. Um, so it does become very subjective at this point. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it's, we know we need the lofts to be in line with your current ones. I think the way the lofts are, are good for a two wedge system at 51, 57. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's, this is where you kind of might say, oh, any pearls of wisdom on it. No, because the sole shape you need is not that weird. It's just not high bounce. Yeah. They all do, like it's a M grind on the 56 for Voki, but we'd, we'd smooth off the crest on the back. Mm. Taylor made their low bounce at you know, eight, eight degrees, more like 10, 12 degrees. That's got the sole shape, Mizuno do one. Um, Cleveland, probably the, the camber of the soles are a little stronger, so I wouldn't okay. go with those. We don't need that high bounce in the middle. You know, and if we're going to minutiae, you know, the, uh, the, um, the pings are a little bit wider, a little heavier back edge. We've got to work the sole, we've got to grind it quite a lot. Mm. You know, Callaway, they do one that's appropriate. <sighs> yeah. I, I'm it's... completely agnostic. Yeah, just leave me in, in what so, makes sense given how I, you know, how I play. This is one of those where there's, there is a, there are four brands that make sense, four yeah. or five maybe in that make sense. I'll yeah, get okay. a couple of the heads, just a bit of minutiae. Okay. Make sure I pick up the right ones. Yeah. Yeah, is, is there a durability difference between them? In the, um, possibly the, a bit. So the ones that, that rust, so the tailor made with that rusting middle yeah. and Callaway have got the, um, with the jaws have got the rust all the way across. Technically there's, there's no plating on it and they will wear a little bit quicker. Um, okay. But the lack of chrome means they feel a bit softer. Mm. Uh, you know, there have you know, been claims about rust over the years that doesn't really do anything. Mm. It, it's a more a feel thing, you haven't got the chrome there. So from a durability point of view, you'd say, well, those probably won't last quite as long as one no. that's chromed. So if we're looking at, that would give an angle on it. And you know, yeah. technically you lose a bit of glare off the face, um, but you're not necessarily gaining enough on spin to tangibly change that, mm. that, that performance characteristic. So if we're looking at, you know, a chrome one's gonna last a bit longer, then mm. you're looking at the Cleveland or the Vokies. Okay. Um, but Cleveland, Mizuno or the Vokies, sorry. Um, the T22s or the or the um, SM9s. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, both. You know, the Mizuno is technically a softer material. Uh, a little bit, a very, very slightly, very slightly more compact around the toe line, tight around the toe line. Yeah. But you know what? It is utterly minimal difference. Um, both of them would maybe do a very, very small amount of mm. fine tuning on the sole shape. Um, thoughts on something like high toe and the low bounce free and keeps the bounce down while offering full face of grooves. Uh, my only concern on that is um, wearing gets a little bit shallower in that way. I don't want the high toe dropping it kind of under a little bit more. Um, so um, technically the high toe would launch it a little bit lower okay. and then the sole shape is appropriate, but the head weights are a little heavier as a result. And if you drop under, I don't mm. want the toe, I don't want that, that top part of the head pulling it under and just dropping it in behind. I'd rather right. rather keep you a little bit more on top and squeeze. So mm -hmm. um, that, that's the only only reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, this is a six and two threes thing. You have a, so have a, essentially a couple of hits with that. It's the one bit of the bag that it's very hard to be, unless there's a very specific grind shape. Yeah. It's very hard to be absolutely 100% the best head because you know, they're all very, very good. We'll do one more and then I'll switch it over uh -huh. to the Voki. Switch you to the Loki from a, and, and so this really is a heavily subjective decision. Yeah. 
but in terms of performance at 100 yards or 80 yards, they're going to be very close to each other. Very, very close, yeah, very close. And, you know, historically, in dry conditions, Vokies have maybe uh, just a fraction higher spin than some, okay. but they're all they're basically caught up now. They're, they're nigh on identical for everything now. Um, it would be... And you're happy on the spin rate I was getting on those? Yeah, it's, uh, that second one was a little bit shallower through, so, but you're, you're up near 9,000 for those that's at 75 yards. So mm. um, yeah, nice, nice level of spin. Okay. And that's the bokey. Yeah, to my, uh, you know, visually, it looks a bit of a lump. It's a bit of a big, the Mazina's a slightly tighter head shape. Yeah. Yeah, just that, a little bit tighter. Yeah. Put a little bit ground and ball onto yep. that. Mind you, not bad for spin considering. So face closed over a little bit on that one, mm. so it took a little bit of spin off, but mm. with, you're going to be within 100 revs of spin on. They're, they're both going to spin well. I think this really is a as much a cosmetic. So if you look in there again, that looks a little bit chunky. Yeah. We'll go, yeah. And go the we'll go that way, yeah. fine. Now they do a couple of different finishes. All right. Gold plated. Um, oh, it is bronze. Okay. Which, for your liking of orange, there is an <laughs> element of orange. It's close. So they do the denim copper. Oh, nice. Which has that finish to oh, it. So yeah. it doesn't rust. Okay. Um, it's the same kind of satin, satin effect. Mm -hmm. um, but. It, it's you know, been, I think they've been pleasantly surprised at how popular it's been. Mm. So it yeah. kind of dulls up a little bit over time, but it is, if you, if you wanted a slightly different finish versus just a standard chrome, um, then uh, mm. they do a raw one that rusts up as well. Okay. They, do this, they brought back the blue back in the last year as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that one, that one offers an element of oral. Yeah, something, yeah, why not? A little yeah. flourish. And having a couple of Mizunos in the bag yeah. keeps me faithful to my... Oh, so that's the, the denim copper there. So it's a sort of a darkened bronze, essentially. You can see the grooves just pop out a little bit. Um, been a very popular finish, actually. Uh, it kind of softens up a little bit mm. with, with usage. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that sole plate's going to stay a little bit more bronze than dark. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been a very popular finish, actually. And with that one, we'll be looking at the um, yeah, 50, so 51 or 57. Yeah. Um, but the 57 in the uh, in the uh, the D grind, I think C or D. I have to double check the exact bands, but I think um, the C graduates off a little bit more. Um, the D's probably it may be we just soften that ridge on the back mm. of the D very slightly. Um, what we How don't we don't want to do is go too low. Right. Um, but that gives us a little bit more to work with. Just that very 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 centre bit there, just yeah. just blend that in very slightly. Okay. So where that peaks, where that peaks up, just blend it in so that doesn't sit quite as high. Mm. Uh, I'd rather take the higher bounce and just trail it off a fraction than okay. go too low and then find we're in trouble. Yep. So, um, right. And that's with the, that'll be with the KBS Torlight jar. Okay. So basically match that set up, but with the current, just a hair more headway, mm. hair, half, half a swing at a point. Yeah. Um, so then grip type inside. So currently on standard tall velvet. Yeah. Um, very, I mean, been a great grip over the years. Anything you'd consciously like to change or have you enjoyed the grip? No. So, yeah. Noticed any kind of issues in terms of in hot weather or anything like that? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, f super happy with them, and um, yeah, no reason to change. You know, I'm not going to. Uh... I'm still a very good grip, and it's. It, I mean, this is one where. It's it's really a textural thing of whether if you'd had issues with it, you could go to something that's got a little more tread, a little more mm. coarseness to get a bit more purchase. Mm. There is an element of do you change for change's sake, or mm. actually, if you've not had any issues with them, it's your only point of contact with the club. Is there any point changing them? Yeah, my gut feel would be no. 
you know, then they, they, you can feel they've stayed actually pretty tacky considering. Yeah, and those have been on since, I'm not sure they've been regrouped at all, would you believe? Really? Yeah. Well, I have worn, well, they haven't shined yeah. up particularly at all. Um, so I think if you were looking for something else or wanted to experience something else, then absolutely change up to them. Mm. But um, that we know the size fits from previous measurement, measurements mm. as well. So I, I think, yeah, there's only, there's only so much one needs to change. So unless you're actively looking to get, I don't know, something with a bit more colour or... No, then, no, um, we'll then sit with those. no reason to change. And keep the logo on the top as a sure. alignment mark, or you could put them logo down. Logo up's fine. But okay, bit of a visual reference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, orange ferrules still oh, we available? Can still do, we can still do some <laughs> orange ferrules, Perfect. black and orange. So, <laughs> and say so a little bit of a, a summary, so we've gone re decent amount of time onto this one, but um, it's, they're, they're not a million miles off, but the current ones are top end, with the irons top end of that weight window, and by dropping into the composite, mm. getting back to that, being able to kind of whip through, kind of make a bit of a snap change of speed, but get the face control, ultimately you've got the face control back, that mm. then allows you to freewheel it up and not have the ones that go all over the place. Yeah. So that's the bit that allows you just to point shoot. So we picked up a little bit of club speed from the lighter shaft, but being able to redistribute a bit of weight out the shaft gives a bit more feel of the head back. It allows the handle to get out in front, but you to leave the face on line. So very, very consistent little drop left to right. Mm -hmm. um, and the start left is just path, face to, face to target, pretty yeah. darn neutral. So it's a three to five yard fade, yeah. but very, very consistent. And the tailor-made head just gave a bit of extra pop of ball speed mm -hmm. um, and a bit more shot value. Yeah. And then wedge-wise, the sole shape's gonna be a little bit more versatile, um, particularly in softer conditions. But uh, actually, you know, set up, really, it's a very, very small fine tune on balance, mm. but giving you a, a denim copper head. Um, and fresh grooves, a bit more spin. Yeah. Um, but I do think, from a control point of view, you saw that, that change, certainly in terms of flight control, spin control on the shorter shots. Mm. Once the ground's firmed up, um, so out there at the moment, not an issue, but once the ground's firmed up, then going to, you know, whether it's a you know, Pro V1, TP5 style ball, mm. you don't need the higher, don't need the higher spin one with the tailor made ones, I think just, there's just enough there. Um, but getting that bit of extra spin out of the ball just gives a bit more control into the greens, particularly in the long run. Yeah. So. Perfect, superb. So I hope, uh, thank you for all the questions. It's been really enjoyed the interaction today. It's been great, there's been lots of questions, which is fantastic. Um, any questions following on from the fit, fire them over and we'll, um, we'll answer them as quickly as possible. Thank you for uh, putting yourself up no. for, for the live fit. Uh, really interesting actually seeing the, the kind of differences there. Yeah. Um, but I say, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Uh, you know, if you're not already, subscribe, like, hit the bell button um, and uh, and we'll look forward to welcoming you another Friday.